Welcome, this is Five Steps to Automated NetOps. Thanks for tuning into this blog, and as always, thank you for liking, sharing, or following me on jameskelly.net slash blog or the other places I post this, like my LinkedIn, YouTube, or SoundCloud. Always appreciated. All right, away we go. Five Steps to Automated NetOps. In Juniper's anthology of five-step frameworks, here we take a different turn. Instead of focusing on a network domain vertical like the five steps for data center, campus, WAN, and branch, we're focused horizontally across all domains on network automation. This five-step can apply to any place in network and be overlaid like a transparency, for example, over the data center five-step not five steps to network automation. Sometimes you climb the ladder only to find it's standing against the wrong wall. In the pursuit of network automation, a multi-decade long affair, the narrative and advancements mostly revolved around programmability, which gave way to NFV and SDN. Despite those developments, network automation seems to have ricocheted back to center for me. I realize that the average NetOps job has practically been sealed in a time capsule compared to the evolution of software engineering and related DevOps and SRE movements. That's not to say that network automation has gone nowhere, but progress has largely been technological in the inner workings of products. We have slightly more autonomous systems. We have abstracted and elevated systems across more network surface area. And we've created more APIs, making systems more automatable. Alas, all of this one-sided network automation does not an automated network make. What has failed to change? The forlorn customer and NetOps opportunity for automation. The handoff from vendor to customer is still on average very siloed and impetuous. NetOps catch what comes over the proverbial DevOps wall and then have to run it. Then starts the same old crucible of some inaugural architecting, some less agreeable administration, and then hapless eons of daily toil and troubleshooting, trying to uphold availability. And we can't forget our friend, IT Gravity, pulling down issue triaging and blame fastest to the lowest common denominator, the network. And brooding over that experience, surely NetOps itself is where the emphasis on automation is needed most, to evolve from automatable to automated. And the metamorphosis cannot consider automation in the vacuum of technology alone, but rather must pay particular attention to ameliorating people and processes. Where to begin? Transforming people and process, it turns out, is hard, but luckily there are bright spots to replicate. The DevOps movement copied the lessons of the manufacturing industry to change the way software engineering was done, and now the most successful NetOps teams are essentially copying DevOps. But it also turns out network engineers don't fancy being called developers, because developers and associated app teams are often the ones dropping the turds following with that IT gravity down upon network engineers' heads. Well, I myself don't mind the term DevOps or DevNetOps, implying developer may induce ire and make network engineers want to duck for cover. Moreover, DevOps is a fairly amorphous set of principles, so leading NetOps teams have drawn inspiration from Site Reliability Engineering, SRE, a prescriptive implementation of DevOps, and dubbed their transformational job Network Reliability Engineering, NRE. This five-step framework to automating NetOps is a journey to a more self-driving network, so to speak, but most of all, a journey of engineering reliability and simplicity, starring upskilled network reliability engineers capable of some coding and wielding the tools of automation to manage the service level goals and indicators of reliability. Think of the framework here as a map. As you orient yourself and direct your path, you'll see progress is seldom a straight line and it won't begin in the same place for everyone. In all likelihood, most networkers are at step one, manual ops, riding the pine, so to speak, in the automation game, and gingerly operating their networks by the ITIL book. But I'm convinced that engineers are dedicated lifelong learners and their stagnation at step one is not so much from hesitation, 
but rather because they're busy firefighting and the network automation narrative has not addressed them directly until the rise of NRE. The importance of taking the first step cannot be overstated. Yet, it's also historically been daunting and difficult for engineers without a software engineering background. This is why Juniper has just launched, see the link to the launch in the blog. We've just launched EngNet, NRE Labs, Atom, free trials, hosted trials, labs, trainings, and new services to ease the first small steps to automating. Reaching for step two, once you scientifically dissect some of the NetOps workflows, then re-engineer what were manual tasks with some coding and tools, it's a virtual gateway drug and virtuous cycle to automating. Finding and sharing and using these tools, you also buy yourself more time to automate, partaking in less toil. Before I cover the steps in detail, you'll see a diagram in the blog. I'll quickly read over the five steps, just their names, not the subpoints. Step one is manual ops. Step two is automated workflows. Step three is about automation, tests, and networks as code, similar to infrastructure as code, of course. Step four is about continuous processes on a continuous pipeline. And step five is about engineering outcomes. All right, let's cover the steps in detail. Step one, manual ops. Manual ops are actually very useful to teach you how things work and fit together. But for tasks that are arduous, lengthy, and especially repetitive, network engineers need to begin to document their tribal knowledge and workflows and assess the ROI of automating them. To move to step two, here's a list of bullets. Adopt an automator's mindset. Be a builder and a technologist, not a technician. Take documented workflows and automate them. At this stage, it can be any ad hoc workflow to cut one's teeth coding and using new tools for speed, scale, and consistency. In addition to using the CLI documentation, explore the API documentation for your systems. Find tools that already exist and dissect them, but also build your own in your own IT context. And finally, realize the value of abstractions and SDN, so you don't have to recreate automation at the box-to-box -box or lower levels unnecessarily where proven systems exist. Automate atop of them. Step number two, automate workflows. In step two, you take documented workflows or their pseudocode and start automating small wins. The biggest payoff is in repetitive troubleshooting workflows, which are in fact an early form of testing and verification that will be used and useful in step three. Troubleshooting read-only workflows are safer than reconfiguration or redeploy read-write workflows. Automating changes during maintenance windows mitigates risk, but ultimately maintenance windows are an IT anti-pattern to avoid, and changes are best handled with the reliability of a pipeline, introduced in later steps. To move to step three, here's a series of bullets. Progress behind ad hoc automating. Begin to practice as code and GitOps, developer-like behaviors. Code means codifying, not necessarily programming. Use SCM workflows and a versioned source of truth for all artifacts, configurations, and creations. Configuration is not distributed and perpetually drifting, but declarative, codified, and its changes are reviewed as are programmed automated workflows. Begin to think proactively of how to eliminate mistakes and manual triggers with both testing and sensors. Connect the then that, step two automated and aggregated tasks that were manually triggered to now start getting automatically triggered. Thus, begin automating the if this to trigger the then that. Use APIs and data from systems like Juniper AppFormix or other telemetry collectors and analytics systems. In one, observability and decision-making moving to NRE surface level indicator tooling. Two, proactive testing instead of relying solely on reactive troubleshooting. And three, automating the if this sensors. Step number three, automated triggers and networks as code. Beyond provisioning, scripting, and programming languages, at step three, you're learning GitOps, 
version control, and code reviewing. You're embracing infrastructure as code and thinking about automating troubleshooting as testing and proactive verification. Test-driven network automation is inspired from test-driven development, or TDD as it's often known. It's not sufficient to simply run scripts and fix problems later. You build holistic tests that protect from failures. And beyond proactive tests, we can also be proactive about triggering some automated actions where event-driven frameworks will help. And proactive triggering requires building or using sensors. Sensors are sometimes based on telemetry and analytic systems that are also useful for providing or building service level indicators. To move to step four, there's three bullets. First, adopt a QA and testing mindset in making all changes, automating not only consistency, but accuracy. Next bullet, testing processes are inserted in between as code and deployment on a pipeline. Congruent to software engineers using a DevOps pipeline, we could optionally call this a DevNetOps pipeline or networking CI-CD pipeline, like Juniper's NITA framework, N-I-T-A, standing for Network Implementation and Test Automation, if you haven't heard of it. And the last bullet, move towards expediting more frequent deployments with out maintenance windows, woes because of higher confidence in automated change testing. Step number four, continuous processes and pipeline. Here, the technology and automation runtime takes on a new axis of pre-production instead of only in production. Step four adds a CI CD pipeline for running automated testing. Continuous integration, CI, allows you to be able to integrate code changes at any time. For example, these could include programming changes or a configuration change. Reliable changes are made possible thanks to automated testing. The automated merging of sometimes concurrent changes into a safely tested mainline and building the artifacts necessary for deployment is continuous delivery, CD. Automating the deployment itself is also wise. Here's a customer example, see the link in the blog, that reaches towards continuous deployment, also CD. And even Continuous deployment still involves manual judgments. Truly deploying at any time, especially following the immutable infrastructure pattern, can cause controlled, isolated outages that require architecting and automating around the outage, of course, to preserve availability and not drop traffic. In microservice-crafted software, deployment patterns like blue-green, canary, or rolling upgrade are more readily possible but networks are not traditionally designed and architected for such things. Though today, some SDN systems, see the link in the blog, in fact, and redundant or sliced hardware systems, another link to the sliced hardware systems, are closer to enabling it. They're closer to enabling CD, the continuous deployment. Beyond CI-CD, continuous response, CR, extends the event-driven if this, then that from step three. Also, CR acts mostly in production instead of the phases of pre-production and deployment. CR with machine learning, deep learning, and big data analytics can be used for observability and automated regulation of networking systems to achieve optimization and efficiency, far closer to the edge of the envelope than what a human would manage. See our Juniper blogs on self-driving networks for more on this concept. To move to step five, four bullets. First, evolve tooling and thinking to that of NRE and SRE concepts. Second, operations culture, observability, and planning is data-driven. Third, seek to understand system efficiency, effectiveness, and satisfaction to customers. Example, the Upstack IT organization or an SP's actual customers. And finally, use chaos engineering and experimentation to understand system boundaries, limits, and dependencies so as to optimize and plan for capacity and what-if scenarios. The last step is step five, engineering outcomes. While step five is the last step, it's still one of continual learning and growth. Here you're able to quickly and safely iterate on the network and fine tune your processes to focus on higher order reliability metrics and other goals. Don't stop at network uptime. Dive deeper and continuously improve your ability to respond to issues and change. 
the network ceases to be the center of the universe at this step, and an NRE, Network Reliability Engineer, specialized in networking though they may be, will manage reliability with error budgets, toil budgets, and service level indicators, SLIs, like any other SRE. They do this for themselves with service level objectives, SLOs, and for their dependents with service level agreements, SLAs. They consider their reliability dependencies. For example, they may have reliability dependencies on software running on infrastructure outside of their control. An NRE here at step five has a worldview in layers of separation of concerns and understands their place in the stack. With agreements, automation, and trade-offs, reliability is a goal to be managed, not necessarily maximized. Speed, agility, and efficiency, and other successes are incidental for the NRE metier that holds reliability and availability prerequisite to other useful economies. Flip through our five-step framework slides to learn more. Technologists seem most gripped by the five-step tool landscape but progress is less about what you use and more about how you use it. And finally, please leave a comment, of course, below about your journey and lessons, whether you're listening to this on YouTube or SoundCloud or reading the blog. And finally, thanks for sharing these ideas long missing in the automation discourse. That's it for this blog, the five step to automated net ops. Thanks for tuning in, and again, thanks for liking, sharing, or following me. As always, I'm going to leave you with a quote. Of course, a quote about the five-step, it's got to be about a step. So the traditional quote from Lao Tzu, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.